On this episode of Arts Weekly, I'm speaking with artist Jim Williams and Alan Etter from the Department of Visual Communication and Design. How one individual confronts another as a stranger, mm -hmm. uh, how, uh, how we regard another person and how we bring our own sense of self, our own identity uh, as we regard the other. And Melanie Bookout from the IPFW Department of Music. We wanted to show documentaries. We wanted to show films that have significant film scores by mm -hmm. series composers. This is Arts Weekly. Arts Weekly is a production of the College of Visual and Performing Arts at IPFW, offering degrees in fine arts, music, theater, and visual communication and design. IPFW, the energy of arts. Hi, I'm Chuck O'Connor, and you're watching Arts Weekly. Joining me is professor, artist, and gallery owner Jim Williams, and Alan Etter, instructor of video and intermedia. They're professors at the IPFW Department of Visual Communication and Design. Good to have you both on the show. Thanks. Thank you. Great to be here. Jim, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, your training, and what sort of things that you teach here at IPFW. Sure. Well, I've really been an artist all my life. I, uh, I have a Bachelor of Arts from Hunter College in New York City, and I got a Master of Fine Arts at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. My master's is in book arts, which mm -hmm. is sort of an arcane field of handbook binding, uh, letterpress printing, the creation of chap books and broadsides. Um, and so that sort of trans translates in, in our program into uh, craftsmanship, assembly of uh, packages, uh, portfolio presentations, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, even though graphic design, uh, animation, all those all those fields use computers, mm -hmm. you still need training in how to draw and use your hands, right? And, oh, right. In fact, uh, our chair is is one of his primary focuses is really to, in the foundations part of our program, to really delve into the craftsmanship mm -hmm. to the fine arts skills of drafting, of, of design, mm -hmm. of hands-on work. Yeah. Um, and so that, that makes our program pretty special in that way. You know, and one thing I noticed is that, that it, it really shows up later on when the, when the students become juniors and seniors and they are working with the computers and all the fancy stuff mm -hmm. and they're, they're doing the high level stuff. I think the, that foundation work, you know, the fundamentals is what, what brings them to that point. Right, you know, well, the, the computer, yeah. doesn't do the work for them. They have yeah. to have those basic skills. Yeah, you have to have an imagination. So to do you also own a, a, a studio and gallery here in town, the 1832 Gallery. Why is it called that, and where is it? Well, you know, I, I was really creative with that, with that name. <laughs> uh, it's at 1832 South Calhoun Street. How will we re ever remember that? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. <laughs> um, and I've actually had the gallery uh, for about four to four and a half years. Mm -hmm. When we first moved to town, I was really looking for a studio space mm -hmm. uh, to do my artwork. And uh, I just happened to find this space on <coughs> Calhoun that had a storefront. Yeah. So I decided to uh, primarily use this space as studio, but also there's this storefront that has that I can use as a gallery. Right, it's kind of down there near the oyster bar and that whole side. It's of, you know, immediately it's, yeah. next to the oyster bar. Right, yeah. exactly. Now, we're, you have some work at, the, at IPFW, some mm -hmm. of your own painting work. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But Alan, getting to you, you have a show opening up yeah. uh, at the 1832 Gallery mm -hmm. in South Calhoun, March 9th. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was um, <clears throat> it's a, a series of uh, drawings and illustrations, paintings and such that are uh, uh, basically come together to form a graphic novel and it's it's called Project 2012 because there'll be 12 graphic novels um, 20 pages each mm -hmm. and um, Jim uh, said that I could show uh, about 10 or 12 uh, of the pieces in his gallery and there'll also be a uh, a documentary that'll sort of explain the whole process and show some of the work that I won't be able to display there. Graphic novels. 
What's the difference between a graphic novel and uh, a comic book? Well, uh, I guess you'd say the, the simplest way to describe it is that a graphic novel is, um, is sort of a non-traditional um, comic book. Instead of just your typical superhero, um, it might delve into uh, political issues or social issues, or it might be a, a completely different um, uh, media that's mm -hmm. used. Um, some artists will use collage, some artists will use watercolor, and mm -hmm. it's just a whole different way. It's not your traditional pen and ink and then, you know, colored um, like a traditional, you know, comic book. So you it's, know, uh, yeah, let's look at some of these images that uh, that th that you're going to be showing. You're going to, here's one right here. You have yeah, all different styles. Yeah, I'm trying to branch out and use as many different styles as I can. Each character tells their own story through narration, but there's a media that goes with it. So uh, this is pen and ink here with acrylic wash. The previous one was all done with watercolor. Um, this one is done with oil pastel and graphite. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to uh, to set a mood for each uh, right. Each book. different book mm -hmm. has a different mood, different style. And then this one is uh, is more of a, a retro kind of story. So I, I went back and I'm using marker and more of a mm -hmm. traditional look to it. Mm -hmm. What's your background, Alan? And uh, well, I got my undergraduate degree at the University of Saint Francis. Um, I was uh, primarily doing drawing, and then when I went off to Bowling Green State University uh, for my master's degree, I had a concentration in oil painting. I see. And uh, working on sort of large-scale uh, drawings and paintings. How did you get into doing graphic novels? Um, I always loved comic books ever since I was a, a kid. Um, I oftentimes um, buy non-traditional comic books, uh, not like Superman, Spider-Man, or, or those. I try to find uh, unique things. And uh, during my illustration class that I teach, I decided to challenge my students mm -hmm. because some of them were saying they didn't have time outside of class to work on artwork. And so I told them I was going to do uh, three graphic novels that eventually blossomed into 12, mm -hmm. uh, but just to show them that you know I can, um, I can be married with a family and kids and everything and, and work a full-time job and do all the other stuff I'm doing and produce artwork mm -hmm. um, on the side. Did the challenge work? It is, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah they, they've been uh, very responsive to it. Uh, they're excited. They're always wanting to know when the next one's going to be uh, printed. And I've got a couple of students who have started working on their own and are working towards um, trying to get a table at the Chicago Comic Con next summer. Okay, and what other things do you teach at IPFW? Uh, besides wet and dry media and illustration, I teach um, a video and intermedia class, which is basically teaching um, how to do uh, editing and compositing um, with video. And uh, since we do a lot of uh, computer animation, it's trying to show students how to uh, combine the animation with live action. We also do some green screen uh, mm -hmm. work like that. And then I teach a uh, uh, two history of graphic design courses. Okay. Uh, Jim, getting back to you, you have an exhibit currently on display here at IPFW mm -hmm. at the Visual Arts Gallery uh, in, in uh, coordination with uh, two other artists, Alma right. Hoffman and, and Mikel Antone, right. called The Other. Right. And we, uh, what, what is that exhibit about and what are you featuring in that exhibit? Well, uh, as the title implies, it's really about one's identity mm -hmm. uh, and how one individual confronts another as a stranger, mm -hmm. uh, how uh, how we regard another person and how we bring our own sense of self, our own identity, uh, as we regard the other. Mm -hmm. It's also about how certain individuals, either through ethnicity or education or um, sexual orientation, uh, is regarded by the mainstream society as the other and even mm -hmm. given inferior status or, uh, you know, made into sure. a pariah or... Yeah. And so it addresses that, uh, you know, not so directly in my work, but more in a you know, symbolic way. Sure. Well, let's look, take a look at some of the images that are up. They're very, very fascinating. And uh, here's one uh, right here. They, these bodies with sort of these masks on them. Yes, right. And that's essentially what this series is. It's, it really started out as, as an experiment in composition. Mm -hmm. um, using the golden mean ratio as sort of the major compositional device. Yeah. And uh, really is a series of paintings uh, wherein the, sort of the self is, is represented by the, by the naked self, you know, mm -hmm. or the true self. And then sort of the masks really represent um, sort of the social persona sure. that we wear uh, as we confront others. And uh, in the case of my work, you know, the uh, I try to represent individuals who really are compelled because of their sense of being other to 
put on these masks mm -hmm. these social persona yeah um, and that's really the basic symbolism of the work right and it's very interesting the way it fits with the others work uh, it's called the other but the whole exhibit but the other two artists because mm -hmm. again they're exploring uh, I guess the identity some people feel about of not being part of the I guess what a lot of people would call uh, you know the majority or, or you know or or the or the or the uh, the, the so-called social norm, which right. is really not a norm at all anymore. It's constantly changing. Right, and especially yeah. in our you know pluralistic society that yeah. that you know is growing more and more pluralistic as we become a more a global community. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, you know, it really is difficult to define something as mainstream. Absolutely. But definitely in in our culture. Yeah. Uh, in our society within America. Yeah. Um, we are pretty divided, and we, we, we pretty much, there are individuals yeah. who are uh, marginalized, yeah. uh, and there are, obviously, there's sort of this division in our, in our. I know, it's, I always found it kind of ironic that in a country that is as free as ours, and that prides itself on its mm -hmm. freedom, uh, we all want to ask each other to be kind of the same. Yeah. Just kind of a thought there. Right. But <laughs> Alan, you also make movies. Yes. Yeah, you know, what kind of stuff are you working on? Uh, well, we're currently working on uh, a, a film that we started uh, about a year and a half ago, and it's all student-driven. Um, mm -hmm. I wrote the script, and I was the director, but uh, students just started taking over, um, learning how to use a camera, um, how to frame up a shot uh, based on storyboards that other students had drawn. And it's a, it's a, it's a science fiction uh, story, but it's more, um, I guess you'd say it's more dialogue-driven and character-driven. It's just about these six individuals stranded on a world and how are they going to survive as things uh, weather-wise get progressively worse and they're not, uh, they're all just wearing uh, jumpsuits because they were all mm -hmm. prisoners on this ship that had crashed. And so we had started filming in the fall and we filmed straight through into uh, February of last year and so the weather just got progressively worse and worse. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the students were real troopers because there was one day we were filming in a uh, frozen riverbed in Bluffton at about 12 degrees. Yeah. And they're just wearing their jumpsuits and they, <laughs> they were just real troopers. But it's, it's been something where they've been able to do all the effects and um, we've got a student uh, who is uh, composing music for it uh, with yeah. his band and it's just been a, a wonderful experience. And we're hoping to wrap it up real soon. Well, okay, and you're also a, a member of, a, I guess, a group of IPFW faculty members mm -hmm. that are exploring the use of iPads in mm -hmm. the classroom, and what kind of things are you exploring? Uh, well, one of the things that I'm uh, using the iPad with is uh, for um, critiquing work. I can photograph the students' work very easily with the iPad and go through and then draw onto it to make mm -hmm. corrections, that sort of a thing. It's also a great tool for uh, working on the graphic novel because I can uh, very quickly, wherever I'm at, whether at a coffee shop or home or school or whatever, um, research an image, um, research an artist, uh, I had a situation where I needed somebody holding something in their hand. I was able to just very quickly snap the picture, go mm -hmm. in, sketch it real quick, and I had a reference right there for me to use for the page I was working on. Well, okay. You know, a lot of exciting, a lot of creativity going on here at IPFW, and you two guys are uh, a good example of that. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. For more information about either of these two exhibitions, please visit ipfw.edu front slash VCD or call IPFW College of Visual Communication and Design at 481-6709. Arts Weekly will return in a moment. <music>